Hey, what's up guys? It's Saturday, and today we're in the Rock Pile Tanks fish room. Apologize about not doing the video yesterday, just got real busy, went shopping and had a long week, so by the time I get ho got home, I was sleeping. But uh, we're doing a video today. A viewer requested I do a, a video on how I got my Blackwater tank, the tannin so dark in it. Um, I actually need to do some tank maintenance. You can see how much water has evaporated over the week, which is outrageous. Um, but anyway, I'm going to do a video, guys, on basically how I got this water, this color. Um, and I've done it. This is a second black water tank I've done. The first one was just to make sure that the water was going to get the color I wanted to. So I did it on a 10-gallon. This is a 55. Um, just to let you know what I'm stocking it with. I got guppies, red and black cobras, um, some neon tetras, some panda coris, golden rams. Um, and you can check out some other black water videos. I go more in depth on that. But I'm going to show you guys real quick what I use to do this. So uh, stay tuned, and we're going to go outside for an adventure. Here we go. So the first thing I got to do is uh, walk down Mount Everest. So bear with me one moment, and uh, we'll walk down that. We'll get over to the other side of the street, and I'll show you guys some of the ingredients here. And, uh, just to show you guys, like, I'm not, you know, these trips when I go get this stuff are kind of, you know, lengthy. Because right now in New York, it's in the middle of winter, and I can't just walk across there. I mean, I could if I had boots on or I wanted snow up to my knees. But, uh, I'm basically going to be walking around. So, here we go. Um, oh, hey, look at that. Jeez, scared the crap out of me. Um, probably, I don't know what that was. Probably a, I don't know, it could have been a morning dove, but I doubt it. Um, this is a cherry tree. Not that it's specific to this tree, but, uh, these branches here, stuff like this that's on trees that is dry, you can break that stuff off and, uh, kind of stick that in your aquarium, you know, angled different ways, top down, bottom up. Um, and when you're using a black water, that'll break up some of kind of your open spaces there with something um, so sometimes I break some of this stuff and I'll use that but uh, the real thing I'm looking to get at is over here across the street there's some leaves I want to show you guys just to give you an example you can use uh, any leaves you really want to to be honest to an extent um, there's certain things you can't use I'm not up to date on it, but I know there's certain trees out there that the leaves are going to be harmful. Um, probably nothing you're going to find in most of your climates. Uh, most of the stuff you guys are going to be finding outside is probably going to be fine. Um, you should always do a quick Google search to be safe, but uh, most of the leaves are going to be okay. So these leaves are usually on um, beech trees, is what I believe these are. Uh, let me reach over here. There's a pretty big snowbank in the way. We're gonna get up here for a second. I'll show you guys. Okay. So all these leaves on these branches, I actually usually just break them right off, the whole branch. That's what I did with my 55 gallon. Um, one of these branches on the end right here has some leaves on it. I snapped it off. Actually, I, I think it's that branch right up there. Um, that's where I broke it off last time. <laughs> But basically what you're looking for is these dry leaves right here. So they have to be completely dry. You don't want them wet still because then you have a whole nother, you know, line of issues. Um, but basically when they're nice and dry like this, hope I'm getting good footage here. The sun's at my back, so I'm not sure how well you can see. Um, but basically, you need to be nice and dry. Um, to the point where, I mean, you can just crush them up like that and they're not wet at all. So these are going to release a lot of the tannins. I know these leaves don't look that dark. I get it. All right. But these leaves, I know because I used them. All right. I know that they're going to, when they start to break down, they're going to release a lot of the tannins. Now, these ones didn't make my tank super, super dark. They did make them make the tank pretty dark and gave me that nice orange tinge. I just stuck them right in there. The, the reason... Well, I broke off, you know, like a branch that they were on 
and it's been a while in winter now so they're starting to fall off but early on they were stuck on branches i broke the whole branch off stick it in there so the leaves don't float uh, normally when you have leaves this dry anyway though they don't normally float the only reason you have leaves that float sometimes is if they're not completely dry or they got you know some kind of oxygen left in them chlorophyll left in them something that causes them floating um so let's go over real quick and i'll just show you the other thing if i can find it or dig it up here rather uh, actually see some right over here on the ground hopefully it's not too deep oh i'm glad i love you guys my feet are all all snow now um but you see the leaves in between these trees here and actually let's see if i can pretty icy out there we go okay so these leaves on the ground actually this is a good example over here they're frozen right now and they're all frozen together which isn't a big deal it's just water um, but these leaves on the bottom of the forest this mat of leaves that's nice and dry from the fall this right here is why I will use, I'll bury that underneath my substrate, my cap, my substrate cap. So with your substrates, which I'll probably do a video on, you have a bottom nutrient layer, and then you have a cap to cap that off usually, most of the time, depending on your nutrient layer. Um, but I'll put this above the topsoil, for instance, if I were to use that, but below like sand or gravel that I'm going to put on top. So you're not visually seeing a lot of this, but it is underneath there, leaching out tannins constantly. So that's... The biggest secret right there giving you that black water um, that's what you're going to want to do is leaves like that that are decomposing underneath your cap um let's see here there was some moss actually going on this tree over here i'm going to take a look at i don't want to get my feet any more wet than they are but hey what are you going to do ah yeah so this moss growing on the trees right here like this um I've tried to convert some of it. I've been successful in the past, um, but throughout moving fish tanks around and stuff, I uh, have lost it. But uh, I think I'm going to try to get some more of that and put it on the tanks. Normally that moss grows like up and out of the water, emergent. Um, so you kind of want to keep that growing out of the water. There's some other stuff over here too I'll show you real quick. Uh, the third ingredient, so we got dry leaves on a stick. Dry leaves in a mat off the floor, forest ground. That's where you're gonna get most of the tannins. That's the biggest one. The other thing is this rotting wood. So this wood right here, they say really bog wood is the best, which is like wood out of swamps and stuff. This wood right here is a little bit darker and kind of rotting, um, but this isn't gonna release a ton of tannins. What's really gonna release a lot is we're gonna go all the way over to my garage and uh, we're going to check out a secret that I've had in store for you guys for a while that I've been trying to utilize and I haven't found a way to do it yet. So bear with me. I'm going to run over there. We're going to check that out real quick. Well, I got it at a snowbank. But uh, one thing I want to talk about while I'm walking here is this is tarmac underneath. But uh, one thing you see on top is all this black, basically sand. So they put this on the roads in the winter time um, because it gives good traction on ice and stuff. But this is ore sand, and it's and, you know it's all black, um, most of it, and you get some granular, thicker gravel in it. Um, but the big thing is with the ore sand, my water has a lot of iron in it anyway, my tap water, because there's a lot of iron in the ground, because there's a lot of iron ore in the ground in the mountain that I live on. Um, but I was thinking about collecting some of this up, washing it real good, and because uh, the salt, they also sometimes salt with this stuff. Not too often. I'd have to really be careful about that and make sure I wash it out real good. But I was thinking about putting the bottom of a tank all ore sand and be all black like that. Um, I'd have to research into that, but as you can see, it's kind of all over the road. So, anyways, over to the garage. Here we go. All right. So we're going to enter my secret lair here. All right. This is not... Let's see if anyone's home. All right. So, over here in the corner, 
this wood right here. So you can see how this wood is kind of dark and it was rotting at a point. It's not wet anymore. So it's not molding rotting anymore. It's been drying out here all winter. Um, Cause the air is very dry in the winter. But this baby, I'm super excited about. I want to get this in a tank so bad. Um, it's hollow the whole way down, actually. Let me. Oh, all right. Yeah, this this is a hollow log. So all the way down through, it is completely hollow. It looks amazing. Um, it's got some great character on all the sides here. I'm swinging you guys around all over the place. Um, but that right there is going to give you a lot of tannins when it starts to break down, decompose. Your um, plecos will go after it if you got them in the tank. They'll munch on it a little. Um, that's going to give you a lot of your tannins. So what I'm looking at doing maybe, um, I know it, this log is about 3 feet. A 55 gallon tank is 4 feet. I think that's a little bit too tight of a squeeze because the back to front on it's not very wide. Um, 75, this would have been cool for. So at this point in time in the fish room, the state of it right now, with this log, we're either looking at a 75 gallon rescape, which is doable. It's a lot of work, but that's doable to incorporate this. And I don't know if it's going to float or sink. It's pretty heavy. I would assume it's going to sink, but you know how wood is. Um... I think this stuff has decomposed enough where, it, where it's going to sink, but we'll see. I'm going to have to weigh it down. Not a big deal. Um, so 75 gallon rescape or 150 plus gallon in the living room. That's what it would go in. And in a six foot tank, you know, this would look not quite as big. I could put a lot of other stuff in there. It wouldn't be the main focus. And 75 gallon, I mean, this is going to take up a lot of your tank. But the thing we're focusing on is that this piece of wood... You know, rotting, bog wood, what have you. This is going to decay and give you a lot of tannins as well. So basically the big three things. We need some wood, some dark wood or decaying wood um, that's dry, not like wet and still rotting. Um, you need some dried out leaves on a steak, if you wish. Um, and then you need some leaf, like a mat of leaves. You can see there's some leaves back there too. Like a mat of leaves, um, like fall foliage, you know, on the ground. If it is wet in the fall, pick it up, set it somewhere, let it dry out. Put that in between your nutrient layer and your cap if you don't want to see it. You can put it above the cap if you wish to see it. But let's go back in real quick. We'll check out the black water and I'll show you how I incorporated some of these things. All right, we're back here from the voyage. Anyway, you can see the sticks already that I had in there. If you check out some of my older Blackwater videos and my Blackwater playlist, you'll see that I had leaves on those and they just decomposed over time and uh, the fish probably munched on them too a little. But uh, those have decomposed over time. You can see here I have some of the wood, the decaying bog wood per se, or some previously decaying wood. And uh, the main piece over here Still had to hold that down with um, some rocks on the top here to keep it from floating. Um, it might not float anymore, but when you got a piece of wood in your tank like that, you don't really want to risk it. <laughs> so, the other thing here, um, one thing I didn't show you guys because I know the river's frozen over and... I'm not saying it contributes a ton of tannins, but I know it significantly does put some tannins into your tank, um, is this here gravel, this here gravel, this here gravel is from the bottom of uh, the riverbed or the brook near me. There's a video I have on some collecting materials that I did that I should show that in, I believe. but. Um, that gravel's from the brook, that's another thing you could use. There are some tannins in the gravel still. Um, but underneath, so I'll show you what I'm talking about with this substrate cap and everything. Um, so I have fluorite at the very bottom, and then I have the sand, and there's obviously some riverbed gravel on top. But um, over here, more so, I just have the sand cap, and then some fluorite underneath. So in between these two layers, you have your fluorite sand cap, 
in between here, um, back there actually, and, and various parts throughout the tank, I put some leaves in between that cap, some of that leaf mat that you saw earlier. That's what went in there. And uh, that basically gives me a lot of my tannins for my tank, uh, in conjunction with the other things we went over. So there you go guys, there's your collecting materials video on what I've used for this black water as far as the tannin producers. Those, a lot of these are things you can, you know, go out into your backyard most of the time and get. Um, and the big thing is, you know, it doesn't really cost you anything. So that's pretty cool. But alright guys, if you liked the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to keep up to date with the videos and the tanks and what's going on in the Rockpile Tanks fish room. Um, thanks for watching, and as always, have a great day.